Hey, Crime Salad listeners, welcome back to another episode of Crime Salad. I'm your host, Ashley. And I'm Ricky. And we're here to talk true crime. But before we do, let's shout out our five patrons this week. We have Maggie, Barbara, Tiffany, Tanique, and Casey. Thank you guys so much for your support. We love you. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And if you haven't already, definitely subscribe wherever you're listening, either on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It really helps our show. And leave us a five-star review. All right, let's go. So this week, we are going over the details of a missing case. A young woman by the name of Corinna Page Slusser is still missing since September of 2017. There was just recently a segment with Kristen Thorne on ABC called Missing that you should really check out after listening to this episode. Coincidentally, we are releasing the episode around the same time, but we hope with increased awareness of this case, it could do some good. Corinna's mother still needs all the help that she can get. She is on the continuous search for her daughter, and everything at the moment has been at a standstill. Corinna could be anywhere in the world, and the one thing that her mother is holding on to is hope. And the big question still remains, where is Corinna Slusser? Corinna Slusser was a small town girl living with her single mother in rural Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. She was a cheerleader, a great student, and she had hopes and dreams of becoming a famous hairstylist and makeup artist. From a review of her social media feed, she had all of the raw talent to get herself there and is downright gorgeous. But behind her beautiful glow, she was hurting inside. Most of us can agree the years growing up in high school can be challenging and overwhelming. Many can agree that normal teenage angst comes into effect around this time, including occasional outbursts and slamming doors. And on the other side is a parent who doesn't know exactly how to help. Her mother, Sabina, mentioned that she was starting to head down a bad path, getting fines for drinking, and she explained that she was becoming out of control, combative, and often lying. Only later in retrospect would it become obvious that Corinna was a young girl in a tremendous amount of pain. In April of 2017, in an attempt to end her pain, Corinna tried to kill herself. She took enough over-the-counter pain reliever to put herself into a coma for several days in the ICU and caused damage to her liver. After such a serious attempt to end her life, Doctors all had the same question. What happened to this girl? They all suspected either sexual abuse or a sexual assault. But since Corinna never shared, we may never know what caused her to lead to this attempt. Corinna's mother, Sabina Tuerto, who was interviewed by Dr. Phil on a special for missing girls and human trafficking, shared the kinds of changes Corinna was experiencing in early 2017. She told Dr. Phil that, quote, Corinna was getting into trouble. She got fines for underage drinking. Honestly, I started noticing everything changed with her. She was kind of out of control. I didn't know how to handle her by myself. She packed up all of her clothes and that was it. I never saw her again, end quote. That interview was done two years after Corinna went missing. But before Corinna went missing, we can only piece together what happened to her in the months leading up to her disappearance through her social media posts, text messages, and court documents. What we do know for sure is that 18-year-old Corinna dropped out of high school with just one class left to graduate. Prior to dropping out, she began having problems with her friends at school, isolating herself, and fighting with her mother over following the house rules. Something that she didn't have a problem with in the past. And by all accounts, Sabina was a very good but also very strict mother. Not realizing her daughter was in a crisis or needing help, she doubled down on her roles, thinking this would get Corinna back in line. Unfortunately, it only served to further alienate her from her life as a normal teenager on the cusp of adulthood. Having already turned 18, there wasn't a lot that Sabina could do to control her. 
Corinna was a legal adult and no longer wanted to follow her mother's rules. She had arranged to move in with her aunt, Julie Becker. However, at the last minute, her aunt began to have second thoughts. She was hearing all about the ways in which Corinna was acting out, and she was worried she wasn't equipped to handle a teenager in the throes of a serious crisis. Instead, Corinna moved in with a friend and got a job at a Cracker Barrel. But this arrangement didn't last long, because Corinna had trouble paying her share of the expenses. She would end up leaving her job and the apartment after receiving just one paycheck. That brings us to the summer of 2017, when Corinna began looking for alternative ways to support herself. She created a profile on Sugar Daddy sites such as SeekingArrangement.com, and there she was contacted by an older man who offered to fund her dreams of becoming a makeup artist in New York City. Corinna told her friends that she was going to attend a prestigious cosmetology beauty school to become a trained hairstylist and makeup artist. And that may be how she was enticed to the big city, filled with hopes and dreams for an exciting future, which is the oldest trick in the book for a predator, knowing how to spot a person in which they can manipulate and exploit their dreams for their own profit. We don't know what happened between Corinna and this man, but we do know what happened next. Within weeks of moving into the city, Corinna believed she was in a relationship with a man named Giovanni Peguero, but he wasn't just her boyfriend. Unbeknownst to Corinna, he was an experienced human trafficker. It's likely Yovani loved bombed Corinna with promises of a grand future and shared dreams. Predators like Yovani will coerce their victims with emotional blackmail, saying if you love them, you will do this one thing for them. Under his influence and with the help of drugs, alcohol, and coercive control, Yovani began exploiting Corinna in the commercial sex trade. However, during this time, Corinna still communicated with her family, exchanging texts with her mother daily and some of her friends. It was when Corinna posted on social media photos of a studio apartment in the Bronx that Sabina first became aware that her daughter wasn't living with a friend, but was instead in New York City. She wondered how Corinna was affording an expensive apartment on her own. Her mother's intuition kicked in, and she suspected that her five foot seven inch blonde haired, blue eyed daughter was perhaps dancing or even stripping to afford her lifestyle. She never could have imagined that her beautiful young daughter had been lured into the commercial sex trade. By all accounts, Corinna had fallen into the hands of human evil. We know from law enforcement documents that during this time frame, photos of Corinna began popping up on websites known for prostitution. Right before Corinna met Giovanni, he had just gotten out of prison for dealing drugs, burglary, and promoting prostitution. A few weeks into their relationship, Corinna and Giovanni got into a physical altercation where he shoved her up against a wall, attempted to strangle her, and stole $300 from her. Corinna called the police and filed a restraining order against him. Corinna failed to show up to court for the restraining order hearing, which caused the matter to be dismissed. The court mailed a copy of the dismissal to the address on Corinna's license, which was her mother's home address. That is when Sabina and Corinna's aunt first began to understand that Corinna may have been caught up in prostitution and human trafficking. And that is when Corinna's aunt texted her asking her to come home. Corinna would never run away and have absolutely no contact with her friends and family. I firmly believe that a person or persons have taken control of my niece. Corinna definitely got into something way over her head. Corinna wanted to move in with me permanently in December of 2016. At first, I had agreed to let her move in. However, I was afraid that I was not going to be able to handle the angst of a teenage girl, so I changed my mind. I do believe that Corinna had 
a whole other life that she was hiding from everyone. Corinna wanted to have a faster, more exciting life, and she met an individual that made promises to help provide her with that. The last time that I spoke to Corinna was on uh, September 11th of uh, 2017. I called her after finding out that she was in New York and asked her if I could come and pick her up. I told her, baby girl, I know that somebody hurt you. And she said, um, yeah, I'm not worried about that. I could never have fathomed that my niece could be involved in a human trafficking ring. I feel very guilty for not being more involved in her, her life in the year leading up to all of this. Corinna, we miss you. We want you home so badly. You have no idea how much you're loved, and we just want you to be safe. That was Corinna's aunt, Julie Becker, on The Dr. Phil Show, where she made a personal appeal to Corinna to come home. And during this interview, she shared a text exchange with Corinna, where Corinna downplayed the restraining order and being attacked by Giovanni. Unfortunately, Corinna's aunt had recently undergone knee surgery and couldn't drive to the city to bring Corinna home. However, she did ask Corinna to come back and live with her. Corinna promised her aunt that her days of being hurt were behind her and everything was okay now. But that wasn't true. What was true was that Corinna was no longer in a relationship with Giovanni. It's suspected that Corinna may have begun trying to engage in sex work without a pimp. This may have been when she crossed paths with Ishiwani. At the time, Ishii was exploiting an underage girl in his custody known in the court documents as victim number one. Wani began placing online advertisements with photos of Corinna and the underage victim from September 10th, 2017 through September 20th, 2017. And during this time frame, Wani and Corinna exchanged over 800 text messages. It's possible that Wani realized Corinna was on her own, offered to help and protect her and earn her money in safety. But knowing Wani's history, it's also likely he never intended to keep his promises and didn't give her the money he owed to her. Wani placed one ad that said, I am a sensual and open-minded, young, sexy Italian woman. I am the epitome of young, beautiful, and fun and can adapt to any situation or your heart's desire. I am a petite, thick, and curvy blonde that weighs 150 pounds. I have sparkling blue eyes, golden blonde hair, and fair olive skin tone. No law enforcement or pimps welcome. I service all. He placed another ad, offering both Victim 1 and Corinna together in a two-for-one girl special. We know from law enforcement documents that there was a falling out with Victim 1 and Corinna, Victim 1 believed that Wani was her boyfriend and called him daddy, which is a common phrase used for a pimp in the sex trade. Victim 1 was upset and began to refuse work until Wani got rid of Corinna. Human trafficking experts believe he may have handed her off to another pimp, or perhaps Corinna went back to Yovani. At some point, Corinna knew she was in trouble. On the 19th of September, she spoke to her mother, who was heading to Florida for her father's funeral. She offered to buy Corinna a ticket, but Corinna told her that she had lost her wallet and her ID. More than likely, her ID was being held by her pimp. That's another tactic human traffickers use to control their victims, limiting their ability to travel and leave. Corinna was defeated, and she told her mom that she was ready to come home. Her mother, still believing Corinna was only escorting and going on dinner dates, offered some tough love words to her daughter, not knowing that they would be her last words. She told Corinna if she wanted to come home, there would be very strict rules. She would need to go back to school and get her high school diploma. She would also have to get a job and work, and she would need to live a drug and alcohol-free life. That is when Corinna simultaneously reached out to Yovani, her original boyfriend turned pimp. In a text message from that same day, he told her that she could come back, but he too had ground rules. 
He stated, I just need you to promise me that when you make that bread, that you are going to give me every dollar and you are going to let me give you what you need to buy your clothes and you're going to let me deal with the rest. This was a text message sent to Corinna just 10 days after Giovanni attacked her. He was trying to coerce her back to work for him through Facebook Messenger. It's common for pimps to pretend to be the boyfriend of their victim and paint a picture of domestic bliss and an idolized future. If she can just work in the short term to earn the money that they both need to pursue their dreams. Giovanni made promises of a bright future that included helping Corinna reach her dreams and goals. But in order to do that, she had to agree to the continuation of sex work. Giovanni somehow convinced Corinna that selling her body was a short-term solution to reaching those dreams. In that same conversation, Giovanni went on to say, Once we come to that agreement, watch how I'ma treat you. I know everything about you that the next guy probably didn't even bother asking, like your favorite color, food, or even your birthday. It fucks with you. We just went through a very bad experience. Honestly, sweetheart, if you would have just stuck to the plan that I had for us, we would have never had that. In just a few sentences, he baits the hook again for their planned future, while also blaming her for not believing in him and deviating from their plan. His plans were always, from the beginning, to use and exploit her for his own personal gain. But she wanted to believe him. She wanted to believe that there was a future outside of sex with strangers for money. We don't know if Corinna went back with Giovanni that night or not. All we know for certain is that he was working hard to get his property back. On the 20th, Corinna was staying at the Haven Motel in the Bronx, in a room that Ishiwoni paid for. But Corinna knew she was in trouble with Woni, and perhaps that's why she looked to Yovani to help her out in her predicament. She tried one more time to negotiate with Yovani. She texted him that Woni had abandoned her in a hotel room in the Bronx with no ID, no money, and no food. She begged him for help. In one message, Corinna stated, I'm just scared to come because of everything. The everything being the night he assaulted her and took her money. But Yovani was all out of sweet talk. He told her that he was only willing to help her if she was ready to get back to work. Then Corinna texted him, If you missed me, you wouldn't say first thing, is she going to work for me? You'd worry about my well-being and get me without a stipulation. You care about the money, not me. At that point, the facade was gone. He flat out told her unless she was willing to behave and resume sex work, turning over all the money to him, that there was no point in continuing the conversation. That was the last time that anyone ever heard from Corinna Slusser again. That was also the same day Corinna told her mother she was ready to come home. However, the entire next week, Sabina began to worry when Corinna stopped communicating. She had also stopped posting photos of herself on social media, which is something out of character for Corinna. She loved to dress up, do her makeup, and take photos showcasing her talent. That's when Sabina filed a missing persons report. However, Corinna was three weeks shy of her 19th birthday and considered an adult. Sabina felt like no one took her missing person report seriously, and they discarded the seriousness once they realized that Corinna was engaged in sex work. It was only the following spring when Sabina was contacted by the FBI's Human Trafficking Task Force that she felt someone finally took Corinna's case seriously. That's when Sabina was informed that Corinna had last been seen in the presence of two known pimps with horrific criminal records. From court documents, we were able to confirm that the 24-year-old Ishiwoni was arrested in 2018 on human trafficking charges. The documents show that he trafficked both Corinna Slusser together with an underaged minor, previously identified as victim number one. He was also charged with pimping and exploiting a mentally disabled girl with an IQ of a third grader against her will. 
In a press release, Jeff Berman with the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, William Sweeney, the Assistant Director in charge of the New York Field Office of the FBI, and James O'Neill, the Commissioner of the NYPD, released a joint statement on November 1, 2018. In the press release, they discussed the arrest of Ishiwoni. They stated, as alleged, Ishiwoni engaged in a vile form of exploitation, using force and other coercion to compel young women to engage in paid sex for enrichment. We will continue to work with the FBI and the NYPD to protect prospective victims of human trafficking and arrest and prosecute predators. That is when the weight and magnitude of what might have happened to Corinna began to set in for Sabina. It was clear to her from the press conference that Woni was a predator, both defined by the law and anyone unfortunate enough to cross his path, especially to young and vulnerable girls and women. Ishiwani is a despicable human being, preying on the most vulnerable among us. And sadly, there are so many individuals like this flooding the streets, or more like flooding online sites, waiting to take advantage of people. Wani faced up to a life in prison for his crimes and would have earned that sentence. However, the judge decided to show him mercy based on the fact that he had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. So he was sentenced to just 15 years in prison. She told him, quote, this is a very serious offense and hopefully you can get the kind of medical care you need, end quote. Sabina spoke directly to Judge Schofield. She said, quote, where is Corinna? Is she dead or alive? Who was the last person he handed her off to? I no longer see the world the way it is. I spend most of my nights scouring the internet for a trace of Corinna. She wasn't a girl no one cared about. She wasn't trash to be thrown away, end quote. And that is when Judge Lorna Schofield apologized to Sabina and told her that she was sorry. She couldn't make Wani answer her. And that is when Sabina shouted, where is Corinna? Is she dead or alive? Who is the last person you handed her off to? Please, Ishi, disclose where my child is. Is she dead or alive? And that is when Wani, of his own accord, stood up and faced Sabina. He told her, quote, Honestly, I don't know. I never passed her off to anybody. Is she dead or alive? I'm honestly not sure, but I pray she is alive. End quote. To this day, Sabina is convinced that someone is holding Corinna against her will. In a media interview with the New York Post, she stated, I know that if she was capable, she would have called me. She is being controlled. I don't know what they've done to her, whether she's on drugs or mentally unstable or whatever, but I know she is not herself. She's a clever girl, but she's from a small town. She doesn't have the street knowledge to survive out there. I can't go on for 10 years like this. The not knowing is just unbearable. I don't know if she is alive, but I can only hope that she is. Now, we are coming up to the five-year anniversary of Corinna's disappearance. And for years, human trafficking experts believed that Corinna was alive and being passed around from pimp to pimp without any means of reaching out. They said it's also possible that Corinna is too ashamed to reach out, some stating that she is too damaged and too dirty to deserve going back to her family, or perhaps she can't imagine everyone knowing that she was forced to perform sex work. Now, these are all common feelings of shame and resignation felt by victims of human trafficking. The young and the vulnerable become brainwashed and manipulated right from the start. They are abused forced, and mistreated. Sabina had appeared on the Dr. Phil show, begging Corinna to come home and assuring her that she is wanted and loved. Sabina has given numerous press interviews and appeared on an episode of The Vanished podcast with a leading expert in human sex trafficking. That expert, Lucy Cohen, stated that prostitution is a lethal profession. In June of 2021, Giovanni was arrested and charged with cocaine possession and promoting prostitution. 
For some reason, his criminal court records have been sealed. But we do know that he was sentenced to two years in jail. A journalist from the New York Post visited Yovani at Rikers Island and asked him for his help in finding Corinna. Yovani insisted that he wasn't the last person with her and to look on the internet to find out who that person might have been, insinuating that maybe a buyer who booked her services may have harmed her. Sabina set up a missing Facebook page for Corinna, and predictably, through the years, some of the most horrific people have tried to extort money from her, offering to sell her daughter back to her, insisting that they knew where she was and when she would be sold again. Some people even managed to get money out of Sabina. Others sent her cruel messages telling her that she wasn't a good mother and to write off Corinna, that she made terrible choices and was amoral and deserving of what happened to her. Sabina is a good mother, and she longs for closure, but Sabina vacillates between hope and despair. The unknowing is a cruel fate she doesn't think she can live with. She wants answers even if they don't lead to the desired outcome. She will never give up looking for her daughter. She is still hoping someone has the answers she seeks and can provide the closure she needs. Sabina also recently relocated to North Carolina, she stated that, quote, I feel hopeless. I waited as long as I could for Corinna, and she wasn't returning, and it's depressing. Sometimes I don't even want to, you know, I don't want to be here, end quote. One of the places where Corinna was trafficked was a site called Backpage.com. California prosecutor Maggie Krell wrote a book entitled Taking Down Backpage, Fighting the World's Largest Sex Trafficker. She worked for over a decade to take down what she called the world's largest sex trafficking operation. Her book was published on January 11, 2021, and in it she highlights some of the most terrible abuses that were facilitated by the website. In the book, she shares that, quote, For almost a decade, Backpage.com was the world's largest sex trafficking operation. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day, in 800 cities throughout the world, Backpage ran thousands of listings advertising the sale of vulnerable young people for sex. Reaping a cut off every transaction, the owners of the website raked in millions of dollars, but many of the people in the advertisements were children as young as 12 and forced into commercial sex trade through fear, violence, and coercions, end quote. The FBI describes human sex trafficking as a crime that lives in plain sight. Some of the warning signs of human sex trafficking include victims who work in the same place that they live, such as motels that charge a weekly or sometimes even hourly rate. The victim may always let someone else speak for them, even when they're asked a direct question. Usually, they're not in possession of their own ID or immigration documents. They also may avoid eye contact or social interaction when in presence of law enforcement or authority figures. They are often malnourished and show signs of physical injuries or abuse. They can be seen checking into motels with older males and often referring to them as their boyfriend or daddy, which is street slang for pimp. Often victims of sex trafficking may have tattoos or branding on the neck or lower back. Corinna had a large tattoo of a flower on her sternum. She also had bruised arms in some of her social media photos and had lost a significant amount of weight in just a few months that she was trafficked. If someone had been looking closely at Corinna, all of the signs were there to find. We know from Corinna herself that she wasn't in possession of her wallet or ID and had told Yvonne she didn't have any money on the last day that anyone knowingly had contact with her. Experts in human trafficking believe it's possible that Corinna is still alive and doesn't have access to a phone or the internet. In one interview, Sabina recently described a dream that she had about Corinna. In it, Corinna was crying and she said she wanted to come home. She laid her head on Sabina's stomach, and that is when Sabina became startled awake. 
For a moment, she thought that meant Corinna was no longer alive, but now she is not so sure. She just knows that she can't give up until she brings Corinna home one way or another. In the last few months, something odd happened to Corinna's Instagram page. Someone with access to her page changed her profile picture to one that she posted almost five years ago. Her profile also liked one of the missing pages on Facebook dedicated to her disappearance. It's likely her page was hacked, but there is only one way to know for sure, and that would be to find Corinna Slusser. Sabina did comment on the changed profile photo and stated she thought someone had hacked into Corinna's account to be cruel. Sex trafficking is very real and is actively a big operation in this scary world. Evil is all around us, and sex traffickers selfishly look to control and manipulate victims with the false promise of an amazing future and a lavish lifestyle in return for sex work. Please be sure to check out Crime Salad's Instagram page where we will post photos of Corinna with her distinctive tattoo that she has on her sternum. Corinna's case is still listed as a missing person case, so if anyone has any information on the current whereabouts of Corinna Slusser, they can contact the New York Police Department at 212-384-1000. Our thoughts and prayers are with Corinna and her family. We hope that she can be found soon. This concludes this week's episode of Crime Salad. As always, we would love to hear your thoughts or comments on the cases we cover. Crime Salad is a Weird Salad production. Are you kidding me? That was perfect.